Hi folks, I'm Ashley, one of the founders of Skira, and in this video I'm going to show you a few of the highlights of the Construct 3 release 388. Let's dive in. First up, we have a brand new behaviour called the follow behaviour, and here I'm looking at a sample project which demonstrates a simple use for it. So it's a simple platform template, and I've got the yellow tinted sprite here, has the platform behaviour, and the green tinted one just behind it is using the new follow behaviour and that has a delay of one second. So that will mean the uh, green tinted sprite will be following the player on the time delay of one second. And this is set up in the event sheet. You can see here there's an action to make it follow the player. Let's preview that and take a look. And now as I control uh, the player with the platform behavior, you can see the green one behind it is uh, following me on a one second time delay. So this is a really great, easy, simple way to make a sort of companion character who follows around the player. Now, it's actually a very powerful behavior. Uh, you can see in some of its other actions, it's got features like being able to um, track the history of the uh, object the behavior belongs to, rewinding history, uh, support for custom properties, and so on. In principle, what this behavior does is records a history of the object that it's being uh, that it is following. So this allows it to do things like record and replay. So if I uh, show this example here, um, I can uh, start recording. I can jump around a bit and press stop recording, and then that's been recorded by the follow behavior. And I can press replay, and now I'm not doing anything. It's just rerunning exactly what I did just then. And uh, as a slightly more exa uh, sorry, advanced example, uh, here's an example of being able to rewind time. So again, this uses the follow behavior to track a history of the object. And as I jump around, I can press uh, R to go into rewind mode. And I can scan through the history of the object's movements and then resume from a different place in the past. This might be a similar mechanic to Braid, uh, which you might be familiar with, um, which is a game which used this mechanic. Um, so take a look at the follow behavior. Those examples are all in the example browser under the new section as ever. Now, another new feature, which is a little bit different, is we have an official plugin for the BBC Micro Bit. Now, if you don't know what that is, this is a, uh, a single board computer uh, with some interesting features like a 5x5 LED screen. It's got buttons, an accelerometer to detect the tilt of the device, and a few other sensors. Uh, so now with the BBC Micro Bit plugin in Construct, you can communicate with the BBC Micro Bit using Bluetooth. So there's a tutorial to help you get started with how all this works and demonstrates how to set it up. That's um, available. Uh, the, the link to this will be in the video description. Um, so have a look there if you're interested in getting started with that. It's used widely in education. So we're looking forward to seeing uh, what classrooms can uh, do with this future. Um, I'll just very quickly uh, show you one of the example projects. This is just a sort of test project to connect to a BBC micro bit and uh, show the accelerometer reading temperature, because um, it's even got a temperature sensor on it, detect the button presses, and so on. Uh, and so if I just show in the event sheet, uh, you can see this is the BBC micro bit plugin. Uh, it's got actions to do things like update the uh, LED display. Uh, and it's also got uh, triggers, um, for example, when an accelerometer reading is received over Bluetooth, then you'll be able to use that. And one a creative example of what you can do with that is uh, this example uh, is using the BBC Micro Bit as a game controller for the simple sort of space shooter type uh, template. So that uses the tilt of the device to control the player and the buttons to shoot. Um, now, because this is just a screencast, I don't have a BBC uh, micro bit to demonstrate right now, but we will be doing a blog post and uh, additional videos covering this uh, in the near future. So keep an eye out for those. Uh, I'll just quickly show that in the example browser, we also have a tag for the BBC micro bit, so you can quickly find the examples uh, using it right there. 
Moving on, next up, uh, the flow charts feature. You'll remember is a relatively new feature uh, added in the uh, previous release of Construct, and we've done lots more work to improve it. So this is just a simple questionnaire uh, flow charts example, which I'm going to use to demonstrate a couple of new features. First of all, uh, by popular demand, you can now create circular structures. So previously, you weren't able to c create an output which goes back to a different uh, node. Uh, so now you can do that and uh, this allows um, better representation of things like finite state machines uh, and other cyclic graphs that you might want to set up using flowcharts. Now when you do this you can see that the line uh, looks a bit messy because it goes over other content. So there's another new feature to help uh, deal with this. You can change the link mode to pathfind and now that will go around all the other blocks which actually uses a pathfinding algorithm, much like the pathfinding behavior. Um, you'll also note that when you select an output, it animates the link so you, you can more easily tell it apart if there are lots of lines uh, going on on screen. And you can also change the color, so this is another way to help uh, identify different kinds of links if you have a lot going on in a flowchart. Uh, one other thing which is new is that, if I just unlink that, there's also the ability to connect multiple outputs to the same input. So previously you weren't able to have both of these nodes going to the same input there, but now, um, now you can set that up. So you can do much more advanced uh, kinds of data structures with the flowcharts feature. There's one more thing I'll just very quickly mention, is you can now add a special kind of reference node. So this is a node which essentially jumps to a whole different flowchart. So if I just quickly add a, another flowchart there, you can now have a reference node here, and you can say um, when it moves into this node, it essentially just jumps to this whole other flowchart and uh, starts um, goes back to the start node there. So this creates uh, an opportunity to link together entirely separate flowcharts. There we go. Um, there's even more, so be sure to check the release notes on flowcharts. Um, and uh, as ever, there's a lot more in this release. I'm not going to cover everything in this video. Um, I, I often say check the release notes, but in this case you really should because there's an absolute raft of smaller features. Uh, these include things like uh, sprite dynamic animations and frames, improvements for animation frame tags, there's a show ambiguous option for find all references, and plenty more like that. So do check the release notes, there's tons there. Um, and uh, it's most of it's um, in the release notes summary, and you can always check the intervening release notes for all the beta releases in between for the absolute full details. Now, there's, um, as ever, we've got a great batch of uh, cool new examples which you can check out here. And um, here's one uh, which I'll just quickly demonstrate. It's a simple synthesizer. Uh, it's written using JavaScript and the Web Audio API. And um, you should be able to hear me using my keyboard to control that. And I'm going to try and play us out with just a tiny little bit of, uh, let's see if I can get something. Okay, I'm going to improvise this. Let's wish me luck. Here we go. There we go. <laughs> Have fun playing that. Um, so check out these new examples. Uh, as ever, we're always working on uh, loads of cool new stuff for constructs, so stay tuned for more updates in future, and thanks for listening. <laughs>